Hello and welcome to Mill City Roasters. Today we're going to do an accompanying video to Ooh. your manual on how to season your drum. I like it. I'm excited. We're going to get this coffee really dark. I was going to say, I think we get to go dark. That's exactly right. This All is right. going to be fun. So essentially, when you get a brand new roaster, that roaster has been manufactured in a manufacturing plant where they're bending metal, it's getting Welding. hot. They're welding. Flux is in the air. Exactly. So there might be Smoke. some residual oils left on the metal. Definitely. There could be little flecks of yep. metal from the welds. There could be. So we need Manufacturing to Manufacturing dirt. Exactly. We need to scrub all that out. Scrub Firstly, it. the best way to scrub out a drum roaster is with green coffee or roasted coffee. We also want to take mm -hmm. out the oil from the drum and replace that oil with new oil from the coffee. Yes. Seal coffee that oil. drum up and get it all ready to rock as we move forward into the roast. Like so what you need mm -hmm, first mm -hmm. is your roaster. You also need some green coffee. Now this green coffee that you have is not going to be consumable after you roast it. Tell me a little bit about this green coffee. Yeah, so this is basically specially selected green coffee for seasoning roasts. Why is it for seasoning roasts? Probably because it's past crop. So in the world of coffee, coffee importers, coffee producers produce a lot of coffee. It doesn't always get sold, so as it gets older, it loses its quality. And it's perfect for seasoning and scrubbing out the inside of your roaster. So we actually sell these in 10 pound bags at a very affordable price point just for your seasoning. And here yeah. we have a three kilo machine. Right. So we need to make sure that we're using a, a full three kilo batch. I like it, full three kilo charge. And we, we recommend it. that you do five batches in a similar style. Five. Like so that. how many kilos is that? 15 kilo, I That's think. That's exactly right. right? Yeah. I'm just like so, 10th grade math here. So when you go to buy your seasoning green, make sure that you have enough coffee for you to do five full batches. Now we are not yep. selling this coffee so that we make a profit. No, not <laughs> This at is all. not some kind of a ploy to get you to buy a whole <laughs> bunch of coffee. This is actually good for your roasting process. Definitely. It's very important that you think about this seasoning roast as your first opportunity yes. to get to know your roaster yeah, and yeah, how yeah. that machine operates. Right. So we ask that you take this seriously. We ask that you sit down, think about it thoroughly, right. read the manual all the way through, watch this video all the way through. I like it. And I actually recommend that you have a person with you that can help you in the process yep. because this is probably going to be the darkest that you'll ever roast coffee yeah. on your machine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's the, the least amount of experience that you've had with your machine. Right, right. I think it's important to just be aware. Be aware of all, all things that are gonna happen. Having a buddy with you will definitely help if something happens. You know, like it's always nice to have that extra set of hands in case something goes off the rails a little bit. That's Seeing right. this is your first roast, that could happen. I don't know, listening to you talk, I kind of, I had this like weird vision of like a first date where occasionally you bring someone with in case the days go off the rails, then you have a way to get out. So in That's case right. our seasoning roast goes way off the rails, we have someone here to help us. That's exactly I right. I like that. It's Derek, good. today, I'll be your buddy. Okay, Let's thanks, do dude. this roast. <laughs> All right. All right. So the, the next thing you want to make sure, you've got your green coffee, you've got your roaster. 3kg. We have already done this for you on this machine, but we have gone through and made sure that all of our ducting is in place. All of the clamps are sealed and ready to rock. Yep. We made sure that all of the uh, points of, of contact are the points of um, connection. connection. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. See, I need a roast buddy too. <laughs> um, all of the points of connection along our gas have been checked yep. to make sure that there's no leaks. Yeah, leak check. Everything is in place. Yep. Everything is ready to rock. We're safe. We, we are safe and right. now we can concentrate. Speaking of safety, Another good thing oh. to have on hand is a bottle of water. Definitely. Explain what happens here. Yeah, it's a simple little squirt bottle full of water. But what that'll do is that'll, that'll absorb a lot of energy in case the roast goes off the rails. So what you can easily do on any roaster is just pull the trier out. Now you have a trier port, which is basically an inlet into the drum where the coffee's hanging out. So when the coffee gets way too hot, you can just put a few squirts of the water in there, let the, let the water uh, basically evaporate. And at that point, you can just bring down the energy within the drum and safely discharge the coffee eventually when it comes down to temp. That's exactly right. Because if you over roast the coffee on a seasoning roast, you're closer to fire than you'll probably ever be with any other roast that you'll ever Definitely. do. So having some water on hand in, while you're roasting in general is a good idea, yep. but really be cognizant of it as you begin this process. Right, and thinking through how you're applying the fuel, you know, because you're gonna be applying fuel in a really intense way that you're probably not gonna do on a day-to-day -day with your roasts. And so that's one thing too, is we're not gonna apply energy the way we are in the seasoning roast, so. 
And yep. after this coffee is roasted, I want to be sure to tell you that you need to throw that coffee away. Right. Don't right, give right, it right. away to a charity. Don't drink it to your, yourself. No. Don't even give it to your enemy. Right. Throw the coffee away. This is going to have all of those little metal shavings and stuff. Yep. Just be safe. Don't be sorry. Definitely. It's not worth drinking it. Well, I think you've got our roaster all warmed up. We're warmed up. up for sure. We've been going 20 minutes, I want to say. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. it's been hot for about 20 yep, minutes. Yep. Um, generally, we like to see a pulse of at least 380 degrees to 410 degrees. Sure. Here we have that pulse going much higher, much higher. all the way to 440. 440. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yep. great. So we're undulating between 440 and about 400. And we recommend to have that happen for at least 15 to 20 minutes. Definitely. A larger roaster may need more time. Sure. If we were seasoning the 500 gram roaster, wow. it could be maybe five, five to 10 minutes. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah. a yep. smaller space. A lot smaller machine, a lot less of a thermal battery to charge. That's right. So now that we're ready, we're gonna take our coffee. Okay. Here in a moment, we're gonna put it into the hopper. When you're at about 385 degrees on your PID yep. temperature we're probe. PID for the charge. Notice we don't even have a computer here. Nope, nope, we're nope. just gonna pay attention to our roaster. Yes. I would like for you to put the coffee, or charge the coffee when we're at 385 degrees. Okay, okay. Tell me when you want the coffee in your okay, hopper. Okay, so you want me to turn off the ignition switch? Let's okay. do it. So we're gonna turn the ignition switch off. Now the solenoid's closed and the temperature will now go down as it, the machine won't allow any gas to flow. So we're in a good place right now. The gas, the gas setting will come on once I turn the ignition switch on too. So we already have a gas setting set up already. So we're ready to go once we hit the ignition. We're coming down pretty quickly in temp. I'm gonna adjust my airflow a little bit. I'm gonna put the airflow to like, what do you suggest, Joe? I say that we put our airflow at about medium setting. I like it, that's what I was thinking. Yep. Let's put our fuel when you start it at okay. about 75%. Okay, okay. And here it says that we want our drum at max speed. Okay, let's do that then, because I have the drum turned out a little bit. So we're gonna max the drum out. I'm gonna say that we're probably gonna be around 70 RPMs. Earlier I counted it where I had it set before, and it was about 60. So I just moved it up about 20 on our dial. All so right, we're good to are go. we ready to no, put some coffee in? Put it in a few seconds. And the only reason I'm having Joe wait, this isn't really to protect the seasoning greens, as we already said, this coffee isn't great, but really it's just a practice makes perfect. Exactly. This is the way we should roast our specialty grade coffee. You don't want to preload your green hopper, because it's basically, this, this little deal right here is like a little frying pan. That's gonna burn your coffee, and it's gonna bake your coffee, and it's gonna create modeling in your roast. Not a good, not a good thing to do. All right, so now we're waiting, we're at 400. So the temperature's coming down. I have the airflow set to medium. And we're doing 385 charge? 385 charge. Perfect, okay. So we'll probably have Joe load the hopper around 390, only five degrees out. And we'll probably move five degrees in about three to five seconds, I'm gonna say. So now we're down to 397, so we're getting closer. This is the fun I'm of ready. being a roaster. I'm ready. Okay, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna test your, <laughs> your, your strength over there. Okay, 395, so we're, we're really close. Sometimes patience is, a, is a, an important part of being a roaster. A lot of times we want to charge ahead, but you know, waiting a few seconds, waiting a few minutes, that's going to be the difference between success and failure. All right, Joe, I think you can, we're still, ah, I'm sorry. You're good. Okay. Okay, I'm going to increase the airflow by just a smidge. All right, you can load. Let's All right, now we're at 390, so we're getting ready to charge. And at the same time I open the green hopper, I'm also going to turn on the timer. And when do you want me to hit it with fuel, right away, or should I wait a little bit? Let's go ahead and hit it to 75% fuel um, at about a minute into the roast. Okay, we're at 386, so we're getting ready to charge. So there we go, 385. All right, I got my timer started. Our hopper has a really big hole in the, in the entry point to the drum, so that was it's really quick and you don't lose a lot of energy. So now we're off and running. So I do have the fuel off, so fuel off. We're gonna hit it with 70% fuel at turning point. 75. 75, got yep, it. Yeah, I love right. it, I love it. It's All really right. important that on your roaster, you do these batches at full capacity. Yep. It's important for uh, the ability of the coffee to really scrub all of that Definitely. drum out. Yep. And this is your first opportunity to see where your maximum heat's gonna be, how quickly your coffee is going to roast, all of those things. Right, so using right, right. max capacity right. is a really smart move. Yep, and we're, you're not just seasoning here. You're going to be acquiring data. As you, as you become a roaster, you're always going to be inquire, acquiring data from your roast that you're then going to apply to your roasting to be better at it. So even though we're doing seasoning roasts here, we're still trying to acquire data on how our machine performs at a full batch. All right. Yeah. All right, so we're a minute. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer, but we're really close. So uh, the time that I'm turn on the fuel. 
So I'm actually watching the PID, watching the temperature go down, and when the temperature starts to go up just for a smidge, then I'm gonna hit the fuel on. All right, so now we're at 130. Uh, we had just hit the turning point, so I'm gonna hit it with 75% fuel. So roughly, this is gonna be about 7.5 uh, inches of water on the gauge. Okay, nice short ignition, so we're roaring, we're roaring there. So Derek, we're going to be shooting for green to yellow transition okay. in about five to six minutes. Okay, nice. Now, sure. when you are on your first roast, this is going to be kind of tough because it might be the first time that you've ever taken coffee to, from green to the yellow point. So yeah. know that if you reach this a little bit early, it's okay. Okay. All you need to do is start backing down the gas okay. so okay. That you don't continue that momentum. Got it. If you reach this a little late, that's also okay. Sure. Just maintain that 75% fuel mark. Okay. okay. Don't back down on that fuel for okay. a little while. Right. And you're going to want to then strive to reach your next um, milestone which is first crack, we recommend that at about eight to nine minutes. Okay. So let's shoot for a five to six minute yellow, or green to yellow transition. Okay, you want me to back off fuel? It looks like we're gonna hit it a little early. Okay, let's go ahead and back off okay. fuel just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna back off fuel and I'm gonna bring it down to 50%. And Derek, how 50%, do you know? Yeah, go ahead. 50% overall fuel. Yep, Excellent. That's what I'm gonna run it at, yep. And how do you know when you're at green to yellow transition? Okay, so I'm gonna get on the trier. So the first thing I'm gonna see is a little bit of color change in the sight glass. That's yep. why the sight glass is there. So you can look, use your sight to look at it. Then I'm gonna pull the trier out. I'm gonna look at the color of the beans and I'm basically looking for 100% yellow, no more green, and I'm gonna back it up with a, little, with a little smell. So I don't know, Joe, I'm gonna have you get a little input in on this. I think there's just a touch of green yep, left there. Yep, yep, just a little touch for sure. And it's still smelling. There's a little bit of hay there still, I wanna say. A little bit of like autumn leaves or something. I'm looking for a little bit more bread, or like earlier I was talking about boiling pasta. You oh, know? Yeah. So like a smell of like that pasta when it's getting al dente. All right, so we're at four. I think we're right about there. 410, 335. I yep. think that's it. Oh, we're gonna call that. Okay, so we're gonna call that 415, 338. All right. So, oh yeah, definitely smelled like pasta. So we're a little fast, and Derek noticed that we were a little fast, so he made that gas adjustment down, yep, yep. which is the right thing to do. Now, I want you to understand that since you're using a lower quality green coffee on this initial roast, Good point. it could be the case Good that point. your colors are across the board very different. Definitely so that. So you may have some coffee that looks green, some coffee that looks yellow, and some may even look a little brown all at the same time. Right. That's okay. Right, right, The right. likelihood of that happening increases if you're moving a little faster. Sure. And it will decrease if you're moving a little slower. Definitely that. And this coffee's dry. You know, with the seasoning greens, we specifically source for this use. So it's a little drier coffee. The dryness is gonna actually have it roast a little faster. You're not gonna be able to get the cup quality you want on it because it's so dry, but it's really for just the seasoning roast. So it probably will move a little fast because it's so dry. Yep. Generally. So now yep. we're shooting for our next uh, phase, which is first crack to happen at about the eight to nine minute mark. Okay, so we're turning our gas down because this batch is actually moving very quickly for us. Since this coffee is quite dry, it's gonna mm -hmm. wanna take on mm -hmm. the momentum and the heat very quickly. Yep. So Derek has heard some of uh, first crack happening already earlier in the roast. Some so outliers. He's back that down. The most important thing here mm. is as we move from first crack Towards second crack, we mm. slow this okay. roast down enough so that entering second crack, we're really slow and it doesn't get out of hand as we go darker into the roast. Yep, yeah, no, we're slowing down a little bit. I'm gonna say we're roughly at 16 ROR. Okay. So we're, we're, we definitely slowed down. Earlier we were somewhere in the 30s. So we're definitely at 16. We're probably holding that pretty well. I think we're getting close to crack though. I'm gonna call crack at three pots. I like three pots for a crack. Okay, yeah, we're calling that right there. So we're roughly saying 6.30 at 3.89, and we're definitely slowing down. So we're going about, yeah, we're going about 16 ROR right now. Yep, by my quick calculations over here. Great. And we want to enter that second crack generally at about 10 to 11 minutes. Okay. And we want to have our rate of rise as we move into second crack be closer to about five degrees per 30 seconds nice, or nice. 10 degrees per minute. Okay, perfect, I like it. We're kind of on that track right now. And now I'm hearing the pop starting in like full. Like there was, the pops that were earlier were pretty much like in the edge of it. Now we get a full on crack. I'm hearing like a, a chorus of cracking in there. Excellent. And it is a little quiet. That's one thing too you might notice about the seasoning roast is that not having a lot of moisture will actually probably produce a little bit quieter crack. Yep. So, and if you're going really slow, then you're gonna have an even quieter crack. So. 
How's it looking over there? Two degrees, so we're looking at a 10. 10 ROR right now, so we're right in track, I wanna say. Excellent. I, I'm definitely hearing popping going on still. So I think we're, oh yeah, we're still, we're still on first. So first is just starting to end. Oh yeah, we're getting a little cocoa, I wanna say. A little like, yes. more like dark caramelized notes, but still in the more caramelized sugar notes. So uh -huh. as you begin to move out of first crack, if you're moving quickly through first crack, sometimes you'll move almost seamlessly into second crack. You will, definitely that. So you wanna make sure that you're close to your trier and that you're smelling the coffee. If this coffee starts smelling smoky, if the coffee has swollen to where the rounded part of the coffee has no wrinkles in it at all, yep, it's yep, nice and yep, swollen, yep. and if the coffee becomes the color of a dark cocoa, then you know you're probably moving into second crack. Right, right, right. Which I think we're moving I into say, right I now. I just heard it, it just started, and it was like, as soon as you were, you were talking about it, it just started like a, the whole chorus. And I always think of second crack a little bit more like Rice Krispies. First crack is more like popcorn, second crack is a little more like Rice Krispies. A little quieter, but it's more like melodic, I wanna I say. I totally agree. And so yeah, it's happening now too. And one thing also, if you notice little spots of oil on your beans when they're still like a lighter brown color, then you're really aggressively roasting. So that's a marker that, hey, maybe you should bring your heat down a little bit. That's right. And these beans are still matte colored. So we've been in second crack now for almost 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, At yeah. that 30 second mark, let's go ahead and turn off the fuel. Okay. But we'll leave the coffee in the drum. I like it, I like it. Go ahead and turn off that fuel. Okay, so we were at about 25% fuel. At, we're 915, 431, fuel off. Okay, great. Yep. So we're moving very quickly. We are. Ooh, That's ooh, totally ooh. okay. Ooh, yeah, now look at that. The beans are getting a little smoke coming yep. off the beans. They're getting a little shiny. They're getting smooth. I don't know why I get so excited about dark roasting. <laughs> Maybe you it's because you get to watch more of the changes of the bean, you know? Yeah, and we're on the edge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Yeah, definitely getting shiny. Yep, shiny. The oils are starting to pour out. Uh, in general, this is not something we would want to see. No, no. But, but right now, we really like this. I think that's why I'm excited. Yep. And what is our temperature doing right ooh, now? Ooh, ooh, So we're at 440. So we're still going up. Still going up? We're going 440, and I'd say we're probably around 10 still. 10 ROR. I'll do a quick count here. 10, 442. 10 minutes, 4.42. So? So we're gonna we're continue to watch this. If we continue to increase in our temperature, the most important thing that you yeah. can do yeah. is drop the coffee into the cooling tray because you don't want it to move up too high. If we start getting close to that 450 degrees, it's gonna be really important that we uh, get the coffee out of the drum and into the cooling tray so that we can stop that. Yeah, I think we're at seven to eight ROR. It's just starting to like plane off. 445.9. We might hit, we just hit 446, but we're pretty much, it's just rolling to a stop right about now. And but this yo, is exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see the temperature stop rising right when the coffee is at a really oily point, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then we can allow this coffee to rotate in the drum. We recommend anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Allow right. the coffee to rotate in the drum, fuel off, air is still at that medium level, your drum speed is still at 100%, and that's gonna exchange all of that oil in the system. Yep. Drop yep. that coffee out and cool it. Yep. I think we nailed it. We just went from 446 to 445 at Wonderful. 11 minutes. So we're just coming down, but we're, we're still hanging. We're probably at a, a declining rate of rise of about eight degrees maybe every minute or something like that, 12. Great. So this is really solid. So why don't we go ahead and pretend that about 10 minutes to 20 minutes has passed Show them how to turn on the cooling tray. Okay, okay. And, and let's get this coffee cooling. Now, out of the trier, I'm getting burning candle or wax. Oh, yeah. So that's another marker, too. Like, hey, I'm getting really close to potentially fire my drum. I'm smelling, like, waxy candle notes. And as a reminder, if this were to continue to increase, we can, as, an, as a uh, last Ooh. resort, spray that water into the trier port to start cooling this down. Maybe show them what that looks yep, like. Yep, yep. Should I squirt? Yeah, go for it. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing the sizzle of that. <laughs> Basically, when that water hits the coffee, it turns into steam, and that steam helps to cool down the coffee in the roaster. Mm -hmm. We let's dropped go. Like a degree or two, just from that one couple of squirts. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So We're let's ready? go ahead and turn on our cooling tray. Okay, turn fan on. Our fan. on. Stirs on. Actually, turn off your cooling tray, okay. the, the yeah, fan. I got it. And let's just watch how smoky this is. Yeah. It's okay if it's smoky, mm -hmm. yep. but let's get okay, ready. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I think we had a lot of smoke get, it, get drawn out the back of the drum. You know what I mean? 
Let's go ahead and turn on our cooling fan. Yep. So you never want to leave hot beans in the cooling tray because you could warp the cooling tray uh, surface. All righty. They're still tinkling out. The beans are really light now too. That's what you're going to notice when you go really dark with coffee. It gets really light. All right, so now we can close the drum. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and lift this so maybe you can see how dark this coffee is. Oh, yeah. Woo. Very, very dark. Very dark, dude. I can smell it too. It smells oh, yeah. like, like char, to be honest, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It smells like nothing I would ever want to drink. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. So now we would want to repeat that process at least four more times. And that is how you season your roaster. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. For sure. This has been another edition of our education series. So come back again next time for another tip, trick, or some good stories. Yeah, totally. See ya. Bye. Thanks, guys.